Hey, we're already there. Anyways, welcome to race number 10 of 29 here in the 1990 throwbacks. And Rusty Wallace has not just maintained his points lead, but has actually pulled away a little bit after a really good run at Talladega. As you can see, at least so far to this point in the season, he has performed by far better than any other driver. We'll see if this continues to be the case here at Charlotte. Of course, this is the Coca-Cola 600, one of the four Winston Million races. If Mark Martin or Daryl Waltrip so happens to win this race, they will win a $100,000 bonus, and they will go to Darlington later on in the season for a chance to win $1 million. Anyways, we'll see who our pole sitter is for today's race, and it looks like it's going to be Terry Labonte on the pole today. With an average speed of 177.166 miles per hour, which is really fast for this course, actually. And we'll go through the top 10 starting lineup really, really quickly. Anyways, Terry Labonte, he is on the pole. Rusty Wallace is in second. Alan Kowicki third. Mark Martin fourth. There's one of your Winston Million contenders. Davey Allison got an excellent starting position in 5th, Bill Elliott 6th, Earnhardt 7th, Ricky Rudd 8th, Jeff Bodine 9th, and Tim Richmond will round out the top 10. So Martin looks like he's going to be the best shot at winning this Winston uh, $100,000 bonus. If he is to win today, of course, he's starting fourth. Daryl Waltrip will be rolling off the grid in 15th. So he definitely has some moving forward to do. Other than that, it's just these drivers up here at the front. And here's the command. Drivers, start your engines. The engines have fired here at Charlotte. Pace car is going to go off, and we are now getting the longest event of the year underway. By far one of the longest events of the year, if not the longest event of the year. Time-wise, and of course it's the longest event miles-wise, 600 miles. If this was a full 100% race, which of course it's not. Anyways, cars come off of turn four. Here they come down to the line. And the green flag is out here from Charlotte. And Terry Lavani got a really good jump off the line. You can see all the cars flying by going into turn number one. Terry Lavani will keep the lead. Wallace will roll in the second. Kowicki to third. It looks like Martin's going to be content with... The fourth position is he's going to go down low. Davey Allison and Bill Elliott, they're now battling for the fifth position. It looks like Allison's going to have that. Elliott will fall to sixth. Rudd will fall in line for seventh. Earnhardt and Richmond, they're battling for the eighth position. And now Elliott, he's going to duck underneath the 28. And it looks like he's going to try to take Davey Allison's position away. That's the battle for fifth. As we take a look up front, Look who's taking the lead. It's going to be Rusty Wallace, your points leader. The man that has really had an on-fire start to this season. Rusty Wallace looking to avenge the ghost of seasons past and see if he can turn that little bit of underachieving into starting to overachieve a little bit. Speaking of overachieving, the second place car, Alan Kowicki, is currently having the best career start to his season. He got that win earlier on in the year. So we'll see if he can maybe win the Coca-Cola 600 for the second time in his career. He's going to go around the 27 here. Coming down to the inside. He's going to get the 27 at the line. So Kowicki's got the lead now. Martin's looking for a way around Terry Labonte. Labonte ducks to the inside of the 27 of Wallace. So Wallace is now going to try to fall back a little bit. Meanwhile, Kowicki jumps out to a little bit of an even larger lead now. Kowicki's starting to pull away. 
Labani trying to find the best way around Wallace. It looks like just sticking it right down to the paint is the best option. Elliot now trying to get involved up here, and that is not a driver that has had the greatest start to the season, but at least he's been up here. Not exactly the headliner that he was well, just one season ago. You can see Earnhardt back there. He's down to 11th in points. He's really trying to go out there and impress today. He has not had a good start to the season either. Meanwhile, here as we complete lap number five here at Charlotte, it looks like Alan Kowicki's holding a steady four or five car length advantage over Terry Labonte. It's another four or five car lengths back to Mark Martin. That'll be for third. And now there's going to be a battle for fourth between Rusty Wallace and Bill Elliott. Elliott did not get a run, so scratch that off. And now we'll see if Wallace can start to reel these guys back in. We'll see how fast that six car really is. Here comes Wallace to the bottom. If we take a look at the fastest lap chart, at least early on here in this race, you can see that Rusty Wallace barely cracks the top 10, but the fastest car on the field right now is that number three car. And here he comes down to the, well, tried to get down to the inside of Elliott, but he got the door slammed shut on him. Wallace, meanwhile, will get around Mark Martin. That'll be for third. Terry Labonte continues to inch closer to Alan Kowicki, lap by lap. Meanwhile, Elliott, he keeps it down to the bottom of the racetrack. Trying to do some smooth sailing here, no issues. Jeff Bodine didn't get a good run, and now Irvin might try to take advantage. Irvin trying to slam the door shut on Ricky Rudd, and he will. Plenty of passing here at Charlotte early on. Charlotte Motor Speedway is usually home to some of the best racing that you will see on the entire NASCAR schedule. Coming here is always a treat. It really is. I know I might be a little bit biased in this, but personally, this is my favorite track on the entire schedule. It just flows beautifully, plenty of room to roam, lots of passing opportunities. It's just a high-speed mayhem track. And it's really a track where anyone can come to and win. Earnhardt now he's going to jump down to the inside of Elliott here this will be for the fifth position if Earnhardt can get around it looks like I don't think he's going to have him cleared coming off of turn four but he should have him cleared coming off of turn two so Earnhardt will have the fifth position Jeff Bodine looks like he's going to slide into sixth here so he's going to sneak around Elliott potentially and he'll take another turn to do that. And Elliot looks like he needs to find the bottom of the track in the worst way possible. Ernie Irvin's now going to go by him. And Elliot has now lost three positions in two laps. And it does not look like that the free fall is done yet. Elliot continues to fall back here at Charlotte. No luck for Bill Elliott thus far. Now, Ricky Rudd, he did not get a good run through the corner, so that is going to at least give Elliott a little bit of a break. His biggest rival, Tim Richmond, right behind him. That's for ninth. And here's 10th place Ricky Rudd trying to hold off a hard-charging Davey Allison. And now here comes Richmond down to the inside of Elliott. And these guys haven't been huge, huge playmakers early on in the season like they were advertised to be. A lot of people are like, I don't, I don't see the juggernauts, the the juggernauts changing this season. It should still be Elliott. It should still be Richmond. The juggernauts of this year it aren't going to change. Well, it looks like that prediction may have been uh, a bit exaggerated because. Man, there are definitely some other players in this season. Specifically, the two leaders up front. 
Alan Kowicki and Terry Labonte are so far putting up either their best career year or the best year that they've had in, geez, in a long time. Remember, Terry Labonte, he had his career year in 1984. Championship form, ended up finishing third that year behind Harry Gant and Bill Elliott. But then again, who didn't finish behind Bill Elliott? In that season, that was just a ridiculous crapshoot by Elliott to go out there, dominate. Not only did he... It, it was just domination of the middle of the schedule. He went into just the super speedways and he just won everything. Four wins in a row. The only time that's ever happened in throwbacks history. Including winning five of six. And it was thought that Elliott was probably going to be the first person ever in the modern era of NASCAR history to achieve five wins in a row because at the end of his uh, four-race win streak, they were going to Daytona. And sure enough, Elliott just put the car on the pole because it's Elliott. But uh, he ended up actually wrecking out of that race. I mean, but just think about this. It was actually a really tight championship points battle coming into the Coca-Cola 600. Uh, coming out of the Southern 500, Bill Elliott had an almost 600-point lead. And I'm not exaggerating when I say he had an almost 600-point lead. Now, that lead did erode away a lot to the tune where Harry Gant actually had a shot of winning the championship in the last race of the season. It was going to take a lot, uh, several Christmas miracles for that to happen, of course, but sometimes that's how NASCAR works. I mean, Elliott needed some miracles if he was going to win the championship last year at Atlanta. <laughs> he did it! You know, he had to make up 180 points in three races, and he did it! There's, there's no doubting what Elliott was able to do last season. It was one of the best comebacks in NASCAR history. I mean, you want to talk about comebacks, of course, you got to think about 1979 with Richard Petty and Darrell Waltrip. You want to talk about, uh, of course, 1984 where Harry Gant made up over 500 points on Bill Elliott, and it still was wasn't even enough to get him within 100 points in the final race, which is just ridiculous. Remember, the final race back then also was Riverside, so... Everyone was expecting Elliott to regress, but he just won his first championship, and was like, I'm just not going to regress. I'm just going to take... I'm just going to take uh, the win every single week, and you guys are going to like it. Despite winning five out of six during the middle of the season, he actually only ended up winning a total of eight races in the year. In the year, so he really cooled off in the final few races of the season. But which, by the way, those eight wins is still a throwbacks record that hasn't been beaten. But it's actually pretty typical because a lot of people have tied it. <laughs> You know, Elliott, eight wins in 1984, comes right back. Darrell Waltrip, eight wins in 1985 to win the championship. Dale Earnhardt, 1986, actually did not get to eight wins. But Tim Richmond in 87, yep. And then you had Earnhardt and, and then you had um, the crazy 1988 points battle where I think it was both Earnhardt and Richmond got to eight wins. I think both of them did. Maybe it was only Richmond. One of the two got to eight wins. Last year, I think we actually had the least amount of wins for a championship winner ever with with uh, Bill Elliott. I think, I think he only had three. And it's the least amount of wins, at least in throwbacks history, of course. NASCAR history, people have won the championship with just one win. Uh, if you take a look at Benny Parsons' 1973 season, it's a championship with only one win. 
Anyways, that was a massive tangent that I went on then. Basically had nothing to do with the race, but... Eh, it's interesting to tell the lore of the series anyways. Uh, coming back to it, basically nothing's changed, uh, with the exception of Dale Earnhardt coming into the fourth position and Russell Wallace coming into the second position. Your leader is still the seven of Alan Kowicki. That hasn't changed. Uh, Mark Martin's trying to desperately hold on to a top five here, as Jeff Bodine, Ernie Irvin, and Tim Richmond are all basically saying, Mark, you got to give me the position by now. And Bill Elia has fallen back to 10th. So Elia has really regressed badly. As far as the other Winston Million contender, Daryl Waltrip, well, he is in 12th, and barring a few Christmas miracles, uh, I'm going to safely say that he's probably not going to be in contention for the Winston Million. Martin's still got a good shot, though. He's got a fast car, fourth fastest on the boards. So Martin does have a fast car. I just think it's only fast in the short run because, man, his long run speed seems horrible, especially compared to somebody with uh, very good, who has had very good lasting speed all season long, of course, Jeffrey Bodine. And this season, although they haven't pulled away with a win yet, it just seems like Bodine continuously, every single week, just comes out of nowhere. By the way, pit stops are starting. So that's really important to know. So Rusty Wallace, he's going to go back to the lead. Anyways, as I was saying, Jeff Bodine, he has just pulled top five after top five out of t after top five out of his backside pretty much the whole season to this point. Uh, it's, they've had an incredible pit crew, and that pit crew has put them in contention to win races. Now, Mark Martin, he's going to be the man to stay out. Well, Dale Earnhardt, rather, is going to be one of the men to stay out this time. So Dale Earnhardt will pick up five bonus points for leading that lap. And I can't stress this enough. Five points can mean the difference to a championship. You know, I actually got a lot of comments last year. Not, not necessarily um, save comments, but on the stream comments. And people are saying, oh, why are you making a big deal of five points? Five points doesn't mean anything. Five points isn't getting you anywhere. It's just five points. What's the big deal? Blah, blah, blah. Five points. It's a pretty big deal. <laughs> In fact, I would argue it's an extremely big deal. By the way, um, it looks like Ernie Irvin had an incredible pit stop because I think Irvin's actually going to come out of this cycle with the lead. We'll have to see. But I think Ernie Irvin's actually going to come out with the lead here. That's... That's quite good. That is really good. Yeah, Irvin's coming out with the lead here. So that's a plot twist if I've ever seen one. So Irvin, with a really good stop, that team has just put themselves in contention to win their first race ever. Uh, Morgan McClure, this team has not won a race at the cup level. Uh, you know, they've had great, great names like Joe Rutman and Rick Wilson <laughs> and Larry Pearson drive for them. So three drivers, they've amounted to basically nothing. And, man, Morgan McClure's actually had a really, really good Speedway package so far this year. And it honestly does not surprise me that Ernie Irvin is now at the in the lead here at Charlotte. So just take everything that you see here with a grain of salt. I wouldn't be surprised if Kowicki runs them down in about 10 laps. But for right now, Ernie Irvin is your leader of the Coca-Cola 600. Remember what I said, that anybody can come here and win this race? Well, you're seeing it right now. Somebody 
who definitely isn't used to leading in races. I mean, we're talking Ernie Irvin. He debuted with uh, DK Ulrich Racing, you know, the two car. And that car just isn't the best equipment. And he was, he, I think he had back-to-back, -back, like, 22nd or 23rd place points finishes. Meddling futility at best. He gets into this four car, and man, I, I gotta tell you, he has done a really good He's done a really good job so far. So we'll see if he can continue this success here in this four car. Meanwhile, third place. Boy, that strategy really paid off for Dale Earnhardt. Staying out there, leading that lap. He picked up the five points, and he picked up a position. So his pit crew really picked him up there. And Dale Earnhardt's now looking really, really nice to potentially put himself in position to win. He's already got 40 career wins. So we'll see if he can try to get career win number 41 here today at Charlotte. Rusty Wallace, he's now in the fourth position, trying to hold on to a points lead. And I'll say that he's not just going to hold on to it, but he's going to make the points lead even bigger again today. Expect the points lead to be anywhere between 70 and 80 points exiting Charlotte unless Rusty Wallace continues to fall back due to, to, due to pit stops. If that continues to happen, eh. And then you've got Ricky Rudd here, somebody who's really had an underwhelming start to the season. Considering the way that he ran last year, his first multi-win season since 1984... Ricky Rudd is, he's just trying to get back on the map, try to get his feet back underneath him with this team. He did a good job last year. We'll see how good of a job he will continue to do once we start getting into the super speedways. Jeff Bodine, we've already talked about him. He's been pulling good finishes out of absolutely nowhere. He hasn't been running up front, leading laps or anything like that. He doesn't have any wins. But he's second in points, and that should tell you something, and that is that this team is crafty more than anything else. Of course, you don't need wins in order to win the championship. That is silly. All that you need is consistent finishes. And if Bodine can keep this up, I legitimately think that Jeff Bodine can actually keep this up all the way through to the end of the season. He might be one of the big players for the championship. Speaking of underwhelming starts, Tim Richmond is off to the most underwhelming start to his season ever since he's gone back, ever since he went to Hendrick Motorsports, I should say, in 1986. Of course, he started with a bang in 1986, winning the Daytona 500 right off the bat with Rick Hendrick. It, it did not take long for Tim Richmond to start winning. Won the championship the very next year in 87. Almost won the championship again last year. I mean, he was... Oh, man. Harry Gant. He was just a Harry Gant away from winning the championship. Mm. Just didn't play out for him. Meanwhile, Elliot, I think he's on a championship hangover. Very similar to what happened in 1985. He won the championship in 84, came back in 85, and was awful. Ended up finishing 7th in the points that year. Elliott just did not have the staying power up front at all. Him and Earnhardt regressed dramatically in 1985, with those two drivers combining for all of one win that year. 1985 was just a crazy season overall. But Elliott... He continues to march on here. Although he hasn't had the greatest start to the season, he's going to try to put the pieces back together and see what he can do. Meanwhile, Mark Martin coming off of back-to-back -back Winston 500 victories last week at Talladega. Man, he was the car to beat back then, and he is just not the car to beat today. Martin just does not have the speed at all. He says that he does not have enough car under him to take the checkered flag today. We'll see if that continues to be the case. Right now, Mark Martin has been slowly but surely falling back through the field. As you can see, him battling for 8th with Jeff Bodine. 
Meanwhile, going all the way back to 10th, and we actually see three more Hendrick cars. Terry Labonte in 10th, Ken Schrader in 11th, Daryl Waltrip in 12th. And all three of them are just not having a good day, and Ken Schrader is just not having a good season at all, considering his breakout year last year with three wins. Two wins, rather. Two wins for Schrader. Breakout season in that 35 car. He comes here with the 18, nothing. So, that, that, he's one of the two drivers that their contract with Hendrick is up at the end of the year. It's the same thing with Waltrip. His contract is up with Hendrick at the end of the year. So, these two really need to make an impression. Daryl Waltrip absolutely has. He's proven that he's got plenty more in the tank underneath him. He's got plenty more in the tank. And meanwhile, here's Sterling Marlin in the 13th position. He's just another driver that, you know, you, you would expect a 15th place points finish out of Sterling Marlin. Right now, he's 23rd. He needs some help. No doubt about that. Meanwhile, up here at the front, we've all of a sudden got a dogfight. Lap traffic has really brought these three cars together. Ernie Irvin has a little bit of an advantage, but Earnhardt is right on the back bumper of Alan Kowicki. So while scrolling through the entire top ten, telling you guys what's been going on with these drivers... Here we go, we've got a good battle for the second position. So Alan Kowicki, Dale Earnhardt facing against each other. Of course, Dale Earnhardt, the three-time champion of the series, 1980, 1986, 1988, 40 career wins, which is a lot. One of the already considered one of the greatest drivers in NASCAR history, and he probably has at least another decade of driving underneath him. And you got to consider the guy's 39 years old. He's got plenty of driving left in him. And you can see uh, Dale Earnhardt taking the second position away from Kowicki, and man, Earnhardt is looking fast. As he just pulls right away from the car that dominated the first third of this race in Alan Kowicki. And now he's going to pull right to the back of Ernie Irvin. Then you got to remember, this is the first time that Ernie Irvin's ever really led on speed. So now all of a sudden, you're a driver, driver. This is your third full season in NASCAR. This is the best race that you've had in your entire life. And you see a three-time champion known for his aggressive racing in your rearview mirror. Man, that's just that's just got to be such an... In There's just got to be a huge intimidation factor there. Ernie Irvin seems to be handling it well, though. He's staying out a little bit out in front of that three car. Playing it good, playing it safe. Yeah, Ernie Irvin right now, for the most part, is doing a good job. He's doing his part, staying in front of Dale Earnhardt, pulling away a little bit. This is all that Irvin's got to do right now. Even though it's prim the primary reason why he's in the lead right now is because of his pit crew, Irvin's showing that it's really not a fluke. He's actually done a really good job holding the lead. He hasn't been a lot slower than Kowicki or Earnhardt. And I think you're about to see just how hard it is to pass at this track. Earnhardt got a really good run off a of turn two, though. No, Earnhardt sneaks underneath. I think he's going to make the pass. And he will. So Dale Earnhardt will now go to the lead here at roughly the halfway point. Lap number 50 here at Charlotte. So Dale Earnhardt has now gone to the lead here and the Coca-Cola 600. Earnhardt trying to win himself another one. See if he can do so. Irvin's not really given up though. He has not really let the three car get too far away as he passes his old uh, car there in the two. Larry Pearson behind it. 
Earnhardt, he seems to just continue. Now he's pulling away a little bit. We'll, we'll see if Irvin can come back here. Let's see here. This will really show the staying power of Ernie Irvin. Let's see how he responds to Dale Earnhardt. Quite possibly one of the greatest drivers in NASCAR history. Uh, overtaking him. I mean, you, you really can't have your morality destroyed. I mean, this is Earnhardt's, what, seventh year with this team, Richard Childress, and he's won two championships with this team. And he won those two championships against quite possibly some of the stiffest competition you we've ever seen. I mean, in 1986, he had to beat Tim Richmond and Darrell Waltrip, who was still, by the way, with he was still by the way with Junior Johnson at that time so <laughs> that was a Darrell Waltrip with Junior Johnson you know Darrell Waltrip I have 70 career victories with this owner you know and three championships the fact that he was able to beat Waltrip and beat Richmond who was unbelievably good in 86 six victories is really a testament to just how good that Dale Earnhardt is. I mean, here comes Irvin now coming down pit road. So now we know that Dale Earnhardt, he has one of the later pit stop cycles. So this is really going to play into Earnhardt's hand here. He's going to be able to keep drivers away from picking up points. And that's something that you've got to think about as a leader. Yes, you want to pit as early as possible, but you've got to remember those five bonus points for leading a lap. If you end up pitting early and trying to get that advantage by coming back out onto the track early, you might let a championship competitor, say Bill Elliott or Tim Richmond, stay out on the track and lead a lap. And those five points will always make a big difference. Uh, I don't think that there's any danger of that happening. Earnhardt's going to stay out on the track as long as possible. He's quite possibly one of the most aware drivers in NASCAR. So he is completely aware of this. He knows. I mean, he's gone out there. He's won three championships in this series. He knows how to get it done here. Undoubtedly. So Earnhardt, he finally slows down. He peels off the track. Martin also peels off the track. And man, Ernie Irvin had another killer of a stop as he is two seconds ahead of Kowicki again. Man. As I try to catch back up to Irvin, wherever he is. So there's Ernie. And Ernie might come, might just come back out on the track with the lead yet again. As this pit crew has been spot on today, and I think will continue to be spot on. Now imagine if a yellow flag comes out right now. That would be horrible. It would be great for Earnhardt and Martin, but it would be horrible for basically everybody else. Now this four car comes back out onto the lead lap. See if we can find where Earnhardt is. There's Earnhardt. So once again, Ernie Irvin's crew puts out a great stop. And this this race is determined more often than not by pitch strategy. Not necessarily by how fast you are, but by pitch strategy. And that's one of the reasons why I love this race. This is a race that unequivocally can be determined on pitch strategy, period. And that is just awesome I really don't care who you are or who you cheer for or whatever this is these are the kinds of things that make races like this awesome just undoubtedly 100% awesome
Well, looking back now, coming off of pit road, our top ten has been shaped, and there are a few differences. Irvin, of course, in the lead. In second place, we've got a Dale Earnhardt and Alan Kowicki battling for that. In third, I mean in fourth, rather, we've got Bill Elliott. He's out in front of Ricky Rudd, so Elliott's been moving up slowly but surely. Same thing with Rudd. In sixth place, we have Jeff Bodine. He's still hanging on up there. Mark Martin's in seventh, so he's not completely faded away. Tim Richmond's in the eighth position. And meanwhile, his teammate Terry Labonte is in ninth. And Ken Schrader is in tenth, and that begs the question, where's the 27 car? Well... I like that question. And I'm going to start searching for him. Here he is. He's in 42nd. And he's been having problems since that pit stop. So Rusty Wallace is having major, major problems. He's four laps down. He's in last place and he's almost doomed to finish in last. So now, Rusty Wallace finishing in dead last. He's not going to get credited with a DNF. But what this will do is pretty much credit Jeff Bodine with the points lead. Either Bodine or Kowicki, one of the two. I think it'll be Bodine. And this is really going to be the opportunity for Bodine's got to get on the gas pedal and go. Try to battle for these positions. Try to get these positions up there. Get up to Ricky Rudd. I mean, yeah, he's got a gap three seconds on Ricky Rudd, and Ricky Rudd is just as good as any other driver out here. I mean, he might not be an elite like Bill Elliott, but he is still a world-class driver. You, you cannot fault Ricky Rudd in that 26 car. So, Bodine, of course, Bodine's a world-class driver in his own right. He might have fallen into a little slump in the mid-80s, but, man, Bodine is a great driver in his own right. He's been trying to recapture that glorious year of 1985 where he finished fourth in the standings. And he just has not been anywhere close to that. And now that Bodine's with Junior Johnson, it seems like he's got the car to do it now. Just period. He's got the car to do it. He's He's got everything underneath him. He can go. thing is that Bodine's just got a lot of gap to make up, and if Rod and Elliot continue battling for this fourth position, it may be possible. It should be understood right now that Dale Earnhardt is flying around this racetrack as he's trying to do F0 to catch up with Ernie Irvin. Which, yeah, Irvin's going through some lap traffic, but man... Earnhardt is really flying around this track trying to catch up to Irvin. Uh, right now, it looks like we're going to have another first-time winner here in the Coca-Cola 600. Ernie Irvin's looking really good right now. Of course, I probably just jinxed him by saying that. But hey, if you picked Irvin to win, I, I think you're going to be right because... Irvin's pit crew has been completely flawless. Irvin's pace has been pretty good. Not great, but good. You take a look at the fastest lap charts. Seven. Not great. Good. Earnhardt has been charging and charging hard, though. And he is really trying to r run down Ernie Irvin, who has not necessarily been charging. Now, this is actually an interesting psychological point here. And I wouldn't exactly expect a driver such as Irvin to be able to do this, but I think what's going on is that Irvin's slowing down his pace a little bit here up front. And basically saying to Earnhardt, okay, you have to waste your tires to get up to me. I'm going to let you get that chance to waste your tires and get up to me. Now, once you catch me, I'm going to start pulling away because I've got fresher tires than you because you've been going at full pace. It's an interesting strategy, and I love it. But I don't know if that's what Urban's intentionally doing here. 
I think he's just taking it easy up here at the front. He hasn't been up front ever before. At least at this level. This is just not something that Irvin is accustomed to. And you got to figure that the next round of pit stops is going to be coming up soon. Maybe in the next six to eight laps. So if Irvin can pull out yet another banger of a pit stop. This race is his. This race is just unequivocally his. Yeah, but he's got to he's got to get another bang on pit stop. That's all that he needs. It's just one more perfect stop, and he might have his ticket punched to victory lane. Jeff Bodine, he has been catching Bill Elliott. More like Elliott's been falling back, but he has been slowly catching Bill Elliott. We'll see if Bodine's actually able to get up to the fifth position. It'll be interesting to see how the championship lies after this. Remember all those races where, oh yeah, the championship's being contested by less than 20 points? Yeah, it's going to go back to being that at the end of this race, considering Wallace has um, fallen to five laps down now. Again, he's not going to get credited with a DNF. But this has just got to be heartbreaking for this team. And just confidence breaking for this team in general too. And that's just something you don't want to lose is confidence and momentum. They had all the momentum in the world on their side after back-to-back uh, -back really good showings. And now... It looked like it was going to be back to back to back, and Wallace is going to pull out to be maybe an 80 point lead. Now you can just erase that off the schedule. Wallace is just going to have to go back to the drawing boards, and he's going to be 60 to 70 points down. You know, he might lose three or four positions in the points because of this. And don't get us wrong, Wallace has an extremely fast car. If this didn't happen, he could have won today. I. Don't get us wrong there, he could have won today, but this is still a huge confidence breaker for this team. With all the ownership issues that have been going on. Signs that maybe IndyCar legend Roger Penske is going to try to purchase this team. And try a forte in NASCAR, and we'll see how that ends up going out, but who knows. The drag, the NHRA racing legend Raymond Beetle, at least the owner legend. Uh, it looks like he's definitely going to be selling this team at the end of the year, regardless of what happens with uh, Rusty Wallace or not. Just have to see what happens. Meanwhile. It looks like Earnhardt has been slowly but surely reeling in Ernie Irvin. But we're going to come to the line here. 25 laps to go. And you got to say, Irvin's made a lot of progress. Yep. We're across the line right now. He's won this race. If he pulls out the same exact pit stop that he was able to pull out before. If he can do that, I think Irvin's won this race. And now we don't have to worry about anything else. They're all going to make it on fuel and tires, no issues. So everyone's going to make it. Earnhardt's probably going to get around Irvin here shortly. There he is. He's going to try here in turn number one. There he goes. Earnhardt back to the point. So now it, this race is going to be between Ernie Irvin and Dale Earnhardt. And even if Irvin does not pick up his first career win today, which, um, damn, if he doesn't, that sucks. That just sucks. But as of right now, it just looks like that Irvin's going to pick up career win number one today. They just need one more stellar pit stop. 
Hey, you got the golden pit crew. Use it. Yep. So now the question is when to pit. One more pit stop needs to happen. It's going to happen in the range of lap 80 to 83. Some lap traffic is now going to pre prevent Earnhardt from really getting away from Irvin. Man, Earnhardt has a really fast car. I was going to say that right now. Now, here we go. Irvin's going to pit now. So, Irvin pitting now is not only going to allow him to get onto the track and try to be faster than Dale Earnhardt for a few laps, that also may give him a little bit of an advantage coming back out on the track. The pitch strategies worked out for him the past two times, short pitting like this. Will it work out for him again? Or will Earnhardt decide to pit this lap and kill Irvin's strategy? I think I think Earnhardt's going to stick to the script and just stay out as long as he can. And I don't know what he's going to do by doing this. He can't get the bonus points for leading the most laps. That's already gone to Irvin. I mean, that's already gone to Ernie Irvin. So, you gotta figure. Okay, Earnhardt passed Irvin on lap 50 last time, and now Earnhardt passed Irvin on lap 77. So, he actually fell behind more on this most recent run. Now, he's gotta realize he's got. What? Now he's going to have 17 laps to reel in Ernie Irvin if if he needs to reel in Ernie Irvin. Whenever he decides to pit. Which should be the next lap. He'll have a total of 17 laps to catch and pass Ernie Irvin, who will probably have... A two to three second advantage on Earnhardt when he comes off a of pit road. If Irvin had that really wonderful pit stop again, which, of course, you, you never know. It looks like his pit stop was pretty good. Nope. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wall trip and Earnhardt getting together there, coming down on a pit road. Here's Irvin. He's out there running his fastest laps, no doubt about that. Irvin right now is having the race of his career. Morgan McClure having the race of his ownership career. His team has never won at the cup level. Ernie Irvin has never won at the cup level. Both of those streaks are going to try to be extinguished today. Let's see where Earnhardt is. There's Earnhardt right there. And there goes Irvin. So Irvin's going to be way ahead of Earnhardt, and Earnhardt's going to have to play a lot of catch-up. I think Irvin has just won this on brilliant pitch strategy. It's not... It's a pretty big gap that Earnhardt's going to have to get here. 16 laps. He's got to make up four seconds. Wow! <laughs> wow! Ernie Irvin has pulled out to a four-second advantage over Dale Earnhardt. And Earnhardt had a second advantage as Irvin came onto the pits. So that means that Ernie Irvin gained a whole five seconds on Dale Earnhardt on pit road. Fifteen laps to go. Ernie Irvin with the race of his life. Trying to pick up his first career win. 
this is this is really what we live for in motorsports when we get to see these kinds of underdog moments play out right in front of our eyes and now Earnhardt's really having issues with people like Michael Waltrip so we see real life underdog moments like that you see the 27 coming down pit road and we already know the headaches that he's had all race long he's almost certainly going to finish 42nd we might actually get through this entire race without anybody exiting out which would be incredible I think that'd be the first time that's ever happened getting through the entire Coke 600 without a DNF right now it's just looking great for Irvin Irvin looking unbelievably good right now a five second advantage I don't think Earnhardt's gonna have an answer for this no no he won't Earnhardt's just straight up not gonna have an answer here so the only thing I can come up with is that Earnhardt's just not gonna win this race in fact he's gonna have to battle for his life for second there could always be a yellow flag. Yeah, but we're, in, we're going to be restarting with inside 10 laps to go. And look at all the lap cars that are currently between Ernie Irvin and Dale Earnhardt. No way, no how. I think Earnhardt's going to still find a way to make this a race. Don't count him out. 11 laps to go. Earnhardt is gaining, no doubt about it, but it, I think the rate is just insignificant to a five-second advantage. It, it's going to be close, actually. It may actually be a lot closer than we think. Ten laps to go. Irvin is all alone at the front. Earnhardt and company are coming, no doubt about it. I don't think it's enough. I just don't think it's enough. The only thing that's going to ruin this is if there's a late race caution. Four seconds is just a lot of time to make up. Nine laps to go. You got to consider Irvin's tires. Five more laps, five or six more laps on him than Earnhardt. So Irvin's not going to be able to go as fast as Earnhardt. He made up all that time on the track while Earnhardt was still out on the track leading laps. Irvin came down, pit, got fresh tires, and that's when Irvin had much fresher tires than Earnhardt. That's how he got this huge lead. Earnhardt is closing in. It won't be enough. I don't think. Meanwhile, some potential championship implications here as, well, Rusty Wallace with fresher tires than everyone else is going to try to blow by. But uh, Jeff Bodine has been knocking on the back door of Alan Kowicki for a little bit here. That's for fifth. So keep that in the back of your mind. Other than that, everyone... Well, we've also got a battle for eighth between Mark Martin and Terry Labonte, but other than that, everyone else is pretty much just spread out. As we're just going to wait six more laps to crown Ernie Irvin as a race winner here in the throwbacks. Earnhardt's cutting that lead down furiously, man. If this was 102 or 103 laps, I don't think Irvin would hold it. But it's 100 laps. Irvin's fine. Five laps to go. Mm 
lead cut down by another four tenths of a second. This race has had a lot of crazy twists and turns in it. But this would be the ultimate. This would just be the ultimate ending. If Irvin was able to do this. Four laps to go. Earnhardt basically reels him in. Nada. Nothing at all. So Ernie Irvin, not only is he going to pick up his first career win, he's going to come away with this race with the most laps led. He can really give a big nod to his pit crew for deciding just an amazing strategy today. His team just gave him an excellent car. And Irvin is just cruising his way to victory. There's no way Earnhardt is catching now. Unless something breaks on the four. And that's what it's going to have to take. Something's going to have to break on that four car. And I just don't think that's going to happen. Two laps to go. Earnhardt's going to have to reel in 1.25 seconds per lap. And that's not going to happen. Yeah, if Earnhardt was going to pass Irvin, he's basically got to be on his back bumper here going into turn four, and that's not happening. So, yeah, Earnhardt is, he's caught up a lot, and that's because he's got fresher tires, but it isn't enough. White flag, one lap to go for Ernie Irvin. In his third full year of competition. Came into the league with DK Ulrich in 1988. Didn't really set the world on fire. He comes here with a new team. With Morgan McClure here in 1990. And it looks like it's going to pay off big time for him. Ernie Irvin is going to win the Coca-Cola 600. Unbelievable. Wiki will edge out Jeff Bodine to the line. I think Bodine will remain, well, get back into the points lead. And what heartbreak for Rusty Wallace. He's going to end up finishing 42nd, five laps down. And an unfortunate turn of events. And, you know, that part where I said that Jeff Bodine is probably going to be in the points lead? Well, I was right somewhat. There is a tie for the points lead. <laughs> As Elliot and Jeff Bodine both have 1,455 points. Alan Kowicki is just four points back there. And tied with Terry Labonte for most top tens, if you can believe that or not. And you can see this is just so, so close. If you're in the top nine, you are in contention for this championship. This may be one of the craziest NASCAR seasons of all time. We'll see you next time for the Budweiser 500 at Dover.